formatting paragraphs, alignment, indentation, line breaks, line spacing, headings and styles. So we're going to take a look at these features that I've just mentioned in relation to the formatting of paragraphs we use in our documents when we create them. So firstly, there's alignment, which allows us to line our text up with a specific margin on the page or both margins, depending on the alignment chosen. We've got indentations, which add a space before a paragraph, and we can adjust how much space that is. We can do multiple indentations to move a paragraph within the page. We've got line breaks, which insert space between paragraphs when a user begins a new line, essentially when they press enter, and we can customize how much this space is between paragraphs. We've then got line spacing, which allows for the space between rows of a paragraph to have their distance adjusted as well in order to support the readability and look of a document. We've got heading styles, which are tools which allow the user to have consistent formatting of font, size and color in relation to different levels of headings within their actual document and their text. And then finally, we've got a fun one, which is drop caps, which enlarges the first letter of a paragraph to drop into the lower lines of the paragraph. So what we're going to do now is actually have a look at actually doing these types of formatting in our document. So the first one we have here is alignment. So I'm going to highlight the paragraph here and up here in my home bar, I've got my alignment tools. So right now it's set to left align, but I can make it center align. I can make it right alignment or I can do a justified. Okay, and with justifies, it tries to touch both sides of the margin. Now you can't see it too well there with alignment there, but I might highlight the top two here and then do a justified alignment. And you can see other than the bottom line of each paragraph, every row attempts to touch both sides of the margin of the document. Okay, so that is alignment. The next one is indentation. And indentation is when we push our paragraph into the page. So if I go up here to my indentation tools, if I press on indent right, it pushes it into the page. So it hasn't centered alignment, even though it's moving it towards the center, it's still left aligned, but it's indented it into the page. Next is the line break. Now, for both line break and line spacing, we're going to actually use now the paragraph tool, which also lets me adjust alignment and indentations as well. So I'm going to highlight line breaks and I'm going to go to my paragraph tool. Now, right now you can see all the line spacing options, but if I actually go into the line spacing options down the bottom here, I can see things such as where my text is going to be in line and how much indentation I use. So they can be tweaked even more finely using this tool. But we're actually looking at line break now. And in order to adjust line breaking, it's in this spacing area here. So I might add 12.2 before the line. And you can see my little preview down here. It's added space before my line. And I'm going to do the same after as well. And I'm going to go OK. And you can see now this paragraph has 12 point size both before it and after it. So if I actually press Enter and start typing something new, Okay, it's automatically inserted that amount of line break that I've set through my customization in that area. So I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to go back. And now I'm going to show you line spacing. Now line spacing is different because it's not just putting the spacing before and after each paragraph. It's actually doing it between each row of the paragraph. So I'm going to highlight my line spacing area. Now the default tools are here for adjusting line spacing. So I can set it to two point where you can see there's big spaces between the rows. Okay, my favorite is 1.15. But as said too, if I actually go into the options, I can adjust it here. So line spacing, and I can choose how much I want to do it. So it could be 1.5, double, or I can get specific. Okay, I can make it exactly and once again start putting in a point font between it. But as said before, my favorite is 1.5. I'm going to go OK. Moving down to the heading styles, so with my styles here, I've already set my title and normal headings, okay? And these are all my heading styles going across the page here. So if I make it title, it's going to make it look the same as the actual title at the top of my page because that's the actual default font I've got sent for my title. If I make it normal, it's going to make it look exactly like all the other text here because that's all set to normal there. Now. The big advantage of using headings and styles is that if I adjust my normal font, okay, I'm right clicked on it and I'm going to go modify. And let's say I no longer want it to be a certain font. I don't want it to be Calibri Light anymore. I actually want it to be Century Gothic, just like my actual heading. So I'm going to go down to Century Gothic 
and I'm going to select it to be my body font. Okay, and I'm going to keep it at 18. What you can also see here as well is I've got adjustments for alignment as well that I can set for this style, as well as line spacing, as well as increased space between paragraphs, all the things we've been looking at in this video. So I'm going to increase the space between paragraphs so that it's all spaced out a bit better. I can adjust indentation too. I'm going to leave it as that, but I'm going to go OK now. You'll see that everything is adjusted to the actual new a style that I've set with that normal formatting. They're all now Century Gothic and they're all sized 18 as we adjusted with our style there. Okay, the final one we're going to look at is Drop Cap and Drop Cap allows the first letter to drop into the following rows. Now, my actual line is in the bottom row here, but I'll show it as an example here first. So I'm going to go into the insert area and I'm going to go Drop Cap and I'm going to drop it down one row. So I'm going to go dropped and then drop it down into the second row. I'm going to go OK. And you can see my D has become big. OK. And obviously drops into the second row of my paragraph. OK. I might also do it with the paragraph above for headings. Once again, drop cap. And we're going to drop it down just one row. OK. So lines to drop. OK. And it goes into the second row. All right, and sometimes that's a nice way to start off a paragraph. Old books used to start always the beginning of a new chapter with a drop cap. Okay, and you can see it's very stylish and obviously adds a bit of pizzazz to your page there. So I hope this video has given you an understanding and how to achieve the following formatting of paragraph uh, using the tools available. So alignment, indentation, line breaks, line spacing, heading styles, and drop cap how they can all be used in combination with each other to add some style to the paragraphs used in your documents.